Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I bring you the Plant Lady, another in the Human Rainbow series. And the Plant Lady is one of a growing collection from Ellen Hudson of these ladies. See the crafty lady on the left? You'll see some samples of some skin tones with the crafty lady later, but I'm going to be coloring the Plant Lady. She's a gardener, and if you are a gardener, this is a great stamp set for you. And I'm going to call her, color her as an African-American lady. And she's going to have a strong shadow from her hat that's cast on her face. Now, some people, that's like too much. You could put sunglasses on her if you wanted to. But the hat really would cast a shadow there. And it would cast a dark one. By the time it's all done, you're not going to notice that as much. You could also go over that dark color if you get too much in there. Go over it with a lighter brown and it will lighten it somewhat. I'm going to start throwing in her hair color, but then realize that I wanted her ponytail to come out in front of her shirt a little bit, so I better color her shirt first. And what color is her shirt going to be? It's going to be Y17, because why not? Because it's the best color. So I'm going to just throw some color in here, and then I was playing around with colors for the shadows. I like using a V04 for the shadow, but I then started trying to blend it after that. Um, once I got all these shadows in and I ran into some struggles. So I'm going to let you see the struggles because that's the way life goes. For some reason, the blending wasn't working. It was staying really wet. I was trying to fix it with a couple different yellows, went back with my Y17, did not like any of that. And I said, you know, to heck with it. I'm throwing in a little YR04 and then cleaned it up a little bit. So sometimes you just got to scribble over things until they work right. If it gets too crazy, then you can always just let it dry first and then go back and work in it because it might start bleeding. For her hair, I wanted her, like I said, to have bushier hair that's going to travel a little bit over top of her shirt. So I'm just drawing scribbles with my black marker and letting her hair be all kind of curly and cute. The hair right underneath of her face and underneath of the hat is going to be the darkest since that's under the shadow of the hat and gives her a real real nice contrast to the, the color in her face. And notice now that the color in her face doesn't look as bleak, black, dark, because it's got something dark next to it. Everything looks different in relation to the color that it's next to. So when you put a really dark color next to it, it'll lighten things up that it's sitting beside. So I'm gonna color through the rest of the image here real quickly. Color my radish, which I couldn't decide if it was supposed to be red or purple. Radishes are kind of both, so I had a little of both color in there. Now the masking for her hand or her glove that's holding the radish was a little on the crazy side. I had to first stamp her fingers, that little blob of fingers that are curled, then mask that part out and stamp the radish, and then masked out the radish so that I could stamp just that part of her glove and then stamp her behind it because she does not have the gloves on in the stamp. There's another stamp for her other hand, but I decided I had enough pain from the one that I wasn't going to do the other one. But you can also stamp them separately and glue them on, which will be a little bit easier for most people. So I decided to make her, her little apron match her glove. So she'll be all matchy-matchy when she goes out into her beautiful garden. And I'm using my favorite YGs, which are the YG9s. They're very natural kind of calm sort of green rather than a really intense bright green because it's going to leave me the ability to make the radish greens a little brighter if I do that. But then I decided to get a little radical on her pants and give her some purple pants because why not? She's in the garden. I don't know about you, but I wear funky clothes when I'm in the garden. I don't really care if I mow the grass and my clothes match. Maybe my neighbors look at me weird and if any of my neighbors are watching, tough luck if you think I'm weird. But I wear whatever I'm wearing. I have been known to go out in my slippers in the backyard. I try not to go to the mailbox because we do have some folks in the neighborhood that go to the mailbox in their house dresses. And I do find that a little bit odd. But in my backyard, I get to wear whatever mismatched nonsense that I feel like wearing. So I'm going to just finish up the coloring on this. I was trying to decide what to do with her for the rest of it. I didn't really want to do a whole scene because I have an idea for something else that I wanted to do, but I wanted a little more of a scene. So I decided to give her some radishes in her garden that she has not yet pulled out. So these radishes, I'm just using a piece of 
tape that I've put across, it's actually a, um, that little roll there, little white roll, is masking paper. So it's post-it post note thickness and stickiness. And put that across so I could just real quickly stamp the greens of the radishes. I'm going to use the same colors on the green tops that I did on the, the first one so that it'll be clear that all of that is matchy-matchy when you look at the card. And then just throw in the blending colors and it's not super important to get that portion all perfect because the important part is her. That's what people are going to be looking at. For the dirt, I put down a base color, a, a light base color, and then went in with a dark color and I added a little shadow and then just some scribbles. Like really, don't get too elaborate with it. And then cover it over with a mid-tone uh, brown. This E37 covers a myriad of sins. It really is quite the color. Now what else I wanted to show you is these. These are the new papers from Ellen Hudson. There's five different ones and they're all black and white and they're colorable. So you can now color your own paper to put on your cards. How cool is that? For the design that I had in mind, I was only gonna need a little strip of this. So I'm gonna just use the markers that are out on my table because then everything will be all matchy matchy when I go and put my card together, which will be really nice. And I was kind of trying to figure out as I was doing this, what do I want to do? Do I want any shading? Do I want any variations? Did I want to get crazy with it? And I was in a hurry. So I decided I'm just going to throw some colors in here. And I wasn't real careful with them. I was going out of the lines because I wanted to put a color in between. So I took a brown and started just coloring in between all of the different little squarey things there. And I'm only doing that strip because that way I can put the rest of this back in my stash and color it with something else to match the next card that I need some pattern paper for. I kind of like the idea of being able to make your own pattern paper because then we can always be matchy-matchy because I'm terrible at matching. Uh, the same reason that I do mismatch clothes out in the backyard. I used to have friends that I worked with that would say, you know, the, that blue shirt you're wearing doesn't really go with those blue pants. And I just didn't care enough. I'm not a fashionista. So yeah, it's nice to know that I can make the match just by using the same markers. So I was playing around with doing a little two-tone in some of these squares, and I'm not really sure that it's actually going to matter on the card. But it was fun to just goof around, put little flick marks on some of them, and give them a little more dimension and that kind of thing and then try to clean up some of the ones that didn't work as well. Just go over top of them with some quick color. So what I did to finish off my card was to cut the panel short so I could have my little pattern paper sticking out. And then I punched a circle and stamped the cinnamon on it and just threw some browns in the dirt portion. And the little shovel, I just didn't stamp the tip of it so it looked like it was in the dirt. And my panel with the girl on it is popped and then the sentiment is popped on top of that. So I got some really nice dimension, got some fun pattern going on down that side and it was just a really fun card to make. Now on my blog there is a still picture of this thing that I did. I didn't film it, sorry about that, but I was doing a little playing around with the crafty lady stamp set and if you want to pick up those colors, because I was experimenting with some on a few of those, just to see if I could come up with some new human rainbow colors. Thank you so much for joining me. Click that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, watch another video, share this with your friends, and I will see you guys next time. Have a really awesome day.